This is Nuclear Energy and Waste Issues by Cooper LaVoy, Michael Chaffron, Devin Rubin-Lamar, and Leo Zahn. Nuclear energy has been a controversial source of energy ever since its discovery in the mid-20th century. Nuclear power works by splitting the atoms of a radioactive fuel, such as uranium, to create steam to turn a turbine. It seems complicated, but it really isn't. However, it isn't completely safe. The byproduct of nuclear power is nuclear waste, which is a highly radioactive and dangerous substance that is dangerous to humans and is very hard to get rid of. Our only means of getting it away is by putting it deep somewhere where it can't bother us. As a result, the approval of nuclear energy is in jeopardy. Often associated directly with nuclear disasters, uranium continues to get a bad rap. We would have to find a viable replacement for uranium, one that doesn't create much waste and is safer to human workers. If we can do that, nuclear power's popularity and reputation can be saved. Next slide, please. Our problem is that nuclear waste is not the exception, but it's the rule to all nuclear power production, and it's also very dangerous to humans and the environment around it. Moreover, it takes thousands of years to become safe to be around. Next slide, please. One potential solution to the issue of nuclear waste is to invest in thorium-powered nuclear reactors. Thorium-powered nuclear reactors are different from conventional nuclear reactors that are being used today, as instead of using uranium, the standard reactor fuel, they use thorium as a fuel. According to A.N. Schmel, who has written over 80 publications in affiliation with the National Research Nuclear University, quote, the proposed development of the international closed nuclear fuel cycle concept by introducing hybrid thermonuclear reactors in it will allow the entire potential of both uranium and thorium to be used, end quote. If we were to invest in the thorium reactors that Schmel is suggesting, then we would be able to start using thorium or continue using uranium if it's necessary. However, uranium produces lots of harmful nuclear waste, and thorium produces far less than uranium. In fact, according to Paula Babadla, who has worked with the Indian Atomic Energy Program, quote, compared with uranium, the standard reactor fuel, thorium yields less radioactive waste. Thorium-based fuels yield much less high-level radioactive waste than uranium or plutonium, end quote. If we were to switch to thorium in our nuclear reactors, then we, we will be producing far less radioactive waste than if we stuck with uranium. Next slide, please. Despite this, switching to thorium reactors has some issues related to it, one of which being that if we were to switch to using thorium reactors right now, it wouldn't eliminate all of the waste that's already been produced by conventional nuclear reactors in the past and in the present. The other, much larger issue, is that thorium reactors are still very heavy in development. According to Sri Kumar Banerjee, who has won many awards in science and technology, quote, feasibility of the science of converting thorium-232 to uranium-233, and then subsequently fissioning uranium-233 to produce nuclear energy, has been demonstrated in several countries. However, no major power plant has been built using uranium-233 as the main fuel source, end quote. A lot more time, research, and effort would be needed to make thorium reactors viable for commercial energy. But if we get over this, then thorium reactors would be a potential solution to the issue of nuclear energy. Next slide, please. Another proposed solution is storing high-level nuclear waste in 500 to 1,000 meter deep geologic deposits. These deposits are often surrounded by strong materials such as granite and often energy. These geologic deposits surround metal storage facilities called repositories. World Nuclear Association explains the layers of these deposits by saying, this is often called a multivariate concept with the waste packaging, the engineered repository, and the geology all providing barriers, end quote. The waste packaging system is normally made from a strong metal such as iron or steel. Some repositories provide isolation of nucleotides from the environment by using rock, salt, and clay. A person who out outlines this isolation is Jane Long, who has conducted research on nuclear storage. She states, the chief elements to the geologic disposal strategy are as follows. One, it is too deep, permanent, and long-term, 
which are used to advantage with the increase in radioactivity. Two, the geologic histories of stable regions was taken into account, and three, the past of hydrologic and geochemical properties of the geology formations were key to the isolation strategy. Next slide, please. <coughs> the two main issues with this solution is improper sealing and seismic activity. Improper sealing occurs due to man-made or machine-made errors where the nucleotides aren't exactly sealed correctly and this can lead to leaking nucleotides. However, this does not occur as often as seismic activity and therefore it is negligible. Earthquakes or seismic activity are fractures in the repositories which cause nucleotide leaks. Some of the counters to these issues are outlined by Wendley, who is a PhD in nuclear chemistry and is a research associate, who states the techniques presented has reference values for seismic activity on complex near surface areas. He mainly points out how the many techniques used are to track seismic activity. This is important because tracking seismic activity can therefore have scientists and analysis lead the waste packaging systems away from track repositories and more into more safer areas. Next slide. So when finding the best solution, there are many pros and cons for each uh, option. For thorium reactors, it sounds great at first due to the minimal environmental effects. Despite this though, it's still very expensive because it's still in development and it still creates waste. And it also does not account for past made waste and there's still waste in the world if we use thorium reactors. Deep geological storage counters these weaknesses though because it was made to be a long-term solution to outlive the neutralization theory of the waste. It is also a very safe solution and it was because it's far underground and sealed in rigid metals such as steel or iron. It also accounts for the old waste, meaning that there would be a solution for waste created in the last 80 years. And seismic activity poses a strong threat to it, but because of strategic placement of these facilities, that is no longer a concern. So the best option we chose in conclusion was deep geological storage because it was the most feasible and best overall. While thorium reactors produce less waste, thorium reactors still produce some waste, so there's still the problem of nuclear waste in our world. And as mentioned previously, it also does not account for past made waste, which there is a lot of. In contrast, deep geological storage accounts for past, present, and future waste, and it does this by containing it in sealed chambers deep underground. The major downside to this, though, is the seismic activity which poses the threat of breakage in the chamber or seals. However, to counteract this, strategic placement is taken into account. And this is backed up by a professor of geosciences, nuclear security, and is the co-director of the Center for International Security and Cooperation, Rodney Ewing. Ewing, uh, while discussing the principles of deep geological storage, says the geological history stable regions was taken as indicative of future stability. Because of all this evidence, we came to the conclusion that deep geological storage is the best solution. Terrific, thanks guys. Just a few questions and then we'll be done. Uh, and I'm just gonna ask them in the order that you guys are, so from left to right. So Michael, you'll be first. So Michael, how did the group decide to include Cooper's perspective in your overall presentation, which part of that came from his paper? So Cooper's perspective was that we should use deep ge geological storage as our best solution, and we incorporated that into our presentation by saying that it was our number one solution, and yeah. Perfect, terrific. Okay, uh, Cooper, you'll be next. So reflecting on all your colleagues' work, everybody else uh, outside of you, which one had the greatest impact on your understanding of the problem of nuclear waste? Devin's perspective of the environmental lens had the greatest impact on my understanding because it really broadened the perspective of the problem of nuclear waste because during my research, nuclear waste wasn't brought up as often as it should have been and it wasn't discussed as a major downside. Okay, terrific. Leo, you'll be next. Uh, what's an example of a compelling argument from one of these guys' reports that didn't make it into the final presentation, and how come? Why was that perspective not included? So 
So Michael's argument was that deaths caused by nuclear energy because of its like danger and like nuclear accidents was the main issue with nuclear energy. However, we decided to exclude that in favor of presenting nuclear waste as the main problem because it, infect, it affects more accidents. It affects the environment and it also infect, affects human health as well. Okay, terrific. And then finally, Devin, uh, if you guys had a fifth team member, right, what perspective do you think you guys could have added which might have improved your final presentation? So this perspective I would have added is probably the political lens. And the reason is because nuclear power is not just used for energy for houses. It can also be used for malicious things such as nuclear weapons and can be used for weapons of mass destruction. So that would have been an interesting topic to explore as well. Okay, excellent. Hey, thanks guys. You are all done.